Hello and welcome to my video. In this video I'm going to be explaining how calcium, which is a very important ion, is able to get into and out of a cell. This is the first video I've done on explaining biological processes and I've been wanting to do it for a rather long time to try and help other people learn. So we're going to begin this video simply by drawing a cell. Next, now that the cell's been drawn, I'm going to draw various receptors around the cell and then soon I'll be labeling them and explaining how each one works. The main receptors that need to be noted about calcium is the voltage-gated calcium channel, ligand-gated calcium channel, the store operated calcium channel, a lysosome vesicle, which isn't a receptor but it's still important, the inositol trisphosphate receptor, the calcium sensor, and the ryanodine receptor. We also have calcium dependent ATPase, which is basically a pump similar to the sodium potassium pump, which a lot of people would know about. Finally, we also have G protein coupled receptors, which play an important role, particularly because they can act upon phospholipase C, which is one word the phospholipase, in case you're wondering, I couldn't fit it all in. Now, phospholipase C is an important enzyme because it is able to take phospholipids from the um, plasma membrane, uh, mostly phospholipids called PIP2, and basically it can cut it in half, and this is important because by doing this cutting stage, it creates two secondary messages, inositol trisphosphate and uh, diacylglycerol. You may have noticed I just added a uh, another um, protein on the membrane. Um, I'll get back to what that does shortly. But um, first, just with phospholipase producing uh, inositol trisphosphate, as you can see in the video, it produces a buildup of this inositol trisphosphate, the IP3, which is a secondary messenger. It acts as this secondary messenger and it travels to the IP3 receptor on the sarcoplasmic reticulum and by activating that it allows more calcium to get out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum and into the intracellular cytosol. Now this is a muscle cell and that wiggly kind of looking thing I've drawn in the cell is my representation of our sarcoplasmic reticulum which is kind of like the, the muscle's version of the endoplasmic reticulum. Now this is um this is very renowned for storing a, a high amount of the um, cell's calcium. Now if the amount of calcium in the sarcoplasmic reticulum becomes too low, this special protein on the sarcoplasmic reticulum's membrane called the calcium sensor will realize this and using signals and phosphorylation cascades and whatever need be, it gets a message to the store operated ch calcium channel called SOC to open up and let even more calcium into the cytosol of the cell. Uh, next receptors that are going to be discussed is the, how the voltage gated calcium channel and the ligand gated calcium channel allow calcium in while the calcium dependent ATPase allows calcium out. Now the way this works is, as the name suggests, voltage-gated calcium channel opens and allows calcium in when the cell reaches a certain voltage. Ligand-gated calcium channels allow the calcium ions into the cell only once a ligand, such as maybe a hormone or something, has bound to the extracellular portion of the ion channel. So that's um, 
ligand gated and voltage gated calcium channels explained. Now for the calcium dependent ATPase. And as the name would suggest, this pump uses the energy from ATP. So using the energy you can get from ATP, it pumps the calcium ion against its concentration out of the cell. And this is one of the mechanisms where it's getting calcium out, which is less common than the mechanisms for getting calcium in. So it's kind of working against itself in a sense, but that's how it works. Right, next we have a receptor I just drew which is called the L-type calcium channel. Now this is a type of voltage gated calcium channel. The L stands for long lasting. So when it gets to a high enough voltage this channel can open for a long amount of time. When it opens it, it can go into the, me the plasma membrane that it's on can bend inwards almost like it's going to be engulfed but it's not. And this is called the T-tubule. Then by doing this, the L-type calcium channel can act upon the ryanodine receptor to cause more calcium to come out of the um, sarcoplasmic reticulum. Alternatively, it can still go in, but instead of acting on the ryanodine receptor, it just allows a large amount of calcium into the cell. And this calcium through a process called calcium induced calcium release acts upon the ryanodine receptor opening it up so that more calcium can come out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum and into the intracellular cytosol finally we have the sodium calcium exchange protein now this exchange protein can work both ways. It can work for when calcium comes into the cell or it can work for it going out. And basically all that happens is when there's three sodium going in to the cell, one calcium ion will come out. Alternatively, if there's three sodium going out of the cell, one calcium ion will enter the cell. So it can work either way as long as there's that exchange going on. Now finally, I did at the start of the video draw a lysosome, basically. A lysosome is an organelle which it uses acids and stuff to break down byproducts of the cell that aren't exactly needed. Now, it can play a part in calcium getting into and out of the cytoplasm. And it's nowhere near as big as the other, the other um, receptors on the plasma membrane. But all you need to remember is that certain factors can allow calcium to get in here. And it can use an exchange of protons to allow calcium out. So protons will go in, calcium can come out. So just kind of remember those key facts, but like I said, good to know, but not quite as important as the um, receptors on the sarcoplasmic reticulum and the plasma membrane. Now, at this stage of the video, you're probably wondering, what's the point, right? So all this calcium gets into a cell, so be it, what do you do? Why, why is this important? Now, I'll tell you, it is really important. First of all, calcium is one of those molecules. I mean ion, sorry. Calcium's no molecule, it is an ion that just is needed in a cell. It just does a shitload of things. Second of all, it is very important in raising the excitability of a cell, whether it's a muscle cell or a or a nerve cell, the more calcium is in it, the more excited it is, and the easier it is really just to shoot off an action potential along it. So it's very, very useful in terms of sending messages and getting muscles 
um, getting from the neuron to the muscle and electrical action potential. Thirdly, it is absolutely crucial in contraction of any type of muscle, whether it be skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, or cardiac muscle. You need calcium in those muscle cells to cause this contraction. If not, no contraction. So you can kind of understand how all this calcium getting in the cell, it actually is important on a larger scale of things. So this is, concludes my video. I hope you all found it informative and helpful or at, on, at least enjoyed it. Um, please let me know if there's any ways you felt I could have really improved it. It is my first video. Go easy on me a bit. Um, yeah, so yeah, thank you for sticking around and watching.